Welcome to Yokomo, an ETS online course on a competence-based development for youth workers. The first thing that comes to my mind is like how not to approach it. So in that, in that way, how not to approach, not to misuse the competence model and just then say it doesn't work. So I think uh, uh, one, of, of one of the important things is to see the competence model um, as a map, but not a, a territory. If you're looking for a comp in the competence model all the definite answers, how you have to be as a professional, how you have to act as a youth worker, I think that's a, that's a wrong way to approach it because none of the models can explain everything. They, they, there's always something that is other that is, uh, cannot be included. And things like uh, personal style or personal characteristics, the way you are, they will never be represented fully in any competence model. So I think that's, that's one of the principles uh, look at the competence model uh, not as a definite uh, view about your profession or your professional development, but as one of the uh, ways, uh, maps, that can give you some uh, direction. Another thing is uh, not to look at self-assessment of the, your competences as uh, uh, as uh, objective truth. So like it's not everything is told in the competence model, it's also not everything which you perceive about yourself is, uh, is uh, completely objective. Because one of the principles it is that competence model is based on self-perception and also perception of others uh, or like how others perceive you and the perception itself is not a, a, a complete objectivity because usually when we approach any kind of self-assessment or evaluative practices, we kind of have an intention that it's, it's objective. I think that comes from the formal and traditional uh, um, evaluations. Uh, to approach the competence model as a subjective practice or it would be the right way to do it, not as an objective, uh, complete uh, truth. Um, and by uh, when you are uh, self-assessing yourself, you are looking at yourself, and then you ask for a feedback from someone and who also shares his or her uh, perception about you. So there is a principle of uh, intersubjectivity, but not objectivity. And that's a difference. One uh, intersubjectivity is that I'm seeing myself subjectively, you are seeing me subjectively. And maybe there's some things that can overlap that I would say they are, they are, they are, they are more true than others. They are more objective. Uh, I, I could call it like this, but it's not a total objectivity. We are looking for the principle of intersubjectivity rather than uh, complete objectivity. And if we are prone to, 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 see, uh, to see the competence model and self-assessment as the final thing, it's not the way to approach it. Another principle I think that uh, is, it's meant to, give, to uh, evaluate you. So competence-based learning is not um, a summative uh, evaluation. It's a formative uh, evaluation or assessment. It's, it's something that should support you, not to criticize you or not to, to I don't know, evaluate you and put you in a certain uh, box. The competence-based um, self-assessment is, I think that's one of the advantages, is that it has the principle of support, not the other purposes. Probably, I would say no, because it's not that, uh, that's the point. I think it's not to, uh, <laughs> to give a, uh, yes or no or bad or uh, good or wrong or correct answer. It's about to give you um, uh, your attention about yourself for your own uh, improvement. For me, I love this metaphor of the map. The map gives you direction. Uh, the map gives you uh, shortcuts how to get to, uh, to your destination where you want to go. 
uh, but then the map itself, but without the user, it's nothing. I mean, <laughs> the map is just a, just a, a painting, yeah? But it, it will be only useful if you are using it and then you know where you want to go. So if you want to be a, um, a good uh, youth worker, the good wo youth worker is someone who uh, has this awareness that there is not such a thing as the best youth worker. Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's not this kind of profession. And probably one of the advantages of the competence model is that uh, 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 the youth work as a profession is a helping professional or, or relationship-based <laughs> profession. Without this relationship, it does not, uh, uh, this profession loses its sense. And then a competence model is helping you to be aware about this relationship that you're creating with the young people, with your te teammates or with the people around. But, not, uh, but the relationship doesn't have any definite uh, good, wrong descriptions. It's, the competence model is the same thing. It, it cannot give you the, these answers as the relationships cannot be. So I think uh, the advantage uh, is based in the principles as well. Uh, the first advantage is that it has to support you to, to be a better youth worker. As to be more aware about yourself, to be more um, aware where you could move fo forward, so it gives you direction. Uh, because I think, at least what I witness, and uh, there are some people who feel that something is not working, but they don't know how to move forward. So I think competence model can give you the direction. It can help you to identify how to, what's wrong. Is it a knowledge? Is it, a, is it my attitude? Is it my um, things that I'm not used to do things, my habits, my skills which are not working? Uh, and in that way to, to, to move forward. Because sometimes when we are in a bad situation, when we are stuck in a problem, I think one of the things that can help most is that really understanding what is this problem about. And then one thing is to, to speak to your colleague, another thing is uh, to, to look at the competence model. Both ways are, are good, it's just an alternative to identify how can you move uh, forward. So I think that's one of the main things, one main advantages, because it's uh, self-assessment, but not for the sake to put yourself in a wrong or, or right position, but to move uh, forward. Another advantage I would see that it helps you to keep your, yourself healthy and also to keep a uh, healthy relationship with your young people and, uh, and uh, the colleagues. Um, the healthiness, I think it's a very important part um, in any kind of relationship-based uh, profession. Uh, because uh, you are not the robot, you're also a human, <laughs> a human person. So this Competence model gives you the eye to be observative also about yourself, not only about the work or to take the young person as an objective thing which you can transform somehow. You cannot transform other without involving or transforming yourself. That I think that would be the main advantages about the healthiness, about the uh, being supportive, about that it gives you direction when you are lost. I think the advantage is also that you have a, a common language uh, to get the feedback from uh, your colleagues, from your peers. Uh, sometimes because of these different perceptions that we have towards ourselves and towards others, sometimes what we are missing is the common language what we are speaking about. Sometimes the same behavior could be understood uh, differently, but once we have a competence model and we, we can identify that this is this behavior, and it's not my bad intention, it's just maybe I have a different knowledge about it. And maybe that's how we can identify, identify where is the, the conflict is coming from, where is the problem coming from. And this feedback could be more, I think, fruitful uh, rather than just uh, based on nothing. I think uh, the pitfall is that um, Again, is based on one of the principles. If you are looking for a completely objective answer, even if you take one competence area and you think that the problem is definitely there, and that's what's not working for me, 
uh, then it will not uh, help you that uh, uh, that much. I think it helps to understand that everything is interlinked as your behavior uh, shows your knowledge, your attitude, your skills. So you should approach competence model as interconnected uh, practice. So uh, don't look for the definite uh, answers. It's always much more than just one uh, statement or one point in the competence model. Try to look for links and other, or other things. Um, the pitfall, I think, it's also the principle that it is based on, uh, on the self-perception. But then the pitfall it can become when your self-perception is pretty critical. Or the opposite, you always think that you're doing the best. Based on self-perception, and you, for example, are not the person who, uh, who likes to uh, see yourself very positively. I think that's a, that's a pitfall, then you can become too critical and the competence model will be definitely linked with the self-criticism, it's the idea. And uh, uh, if you are developing your awareness, you can notice that I'm, I'm, I'm a pretty self-critical person and maybe I should not be doing this alone. Maybe I should uh, actually involve some uh, colleagues which are wishing me well and, and then we can uh, look at this. Definitely for these kind of people I would uh, suggest to make a peer session for, for, for the assessment of uh, competences. One of the advices that I would give uh, to the youth workers that they should not um, try to approach the whole competence model at once. Because the pitfall is that when you are trying to look at it at, the, at one and one go, uh, then you are becoming too um, too broad, I would say, uh, because and then you are losing the main essence of the competence model. I think you have to be in a relationship in order to uh, to see uh, how you are doing. So the relationship with your colleagues also show a lot uh, who you are, uh, uh, how self-aware you are, and that uh, helps you to, to, to know yourself better. It's, it's just one of these basics that if you want to work with people, you have to work with yourself and through other people. And the colleagues who are wishing you well, and I think that's a very important thing, make sure that these colleagues are the colleagues which you are not competing with or they're people who don't have complicated relationships towards you. I think these are the best uh, colleagues that can uh, support you well. For example, coming to the training course, which, uh, which you meet uh, other professionals, which can give you some other perspective, but also they have uh, only good intentions towards you. I think it's one of the best ways to get a pretty clear, uh, cl clear view how, how, how it goes. So peer community in this kind of... Uh, job cannot be, um, you know, underestimated, definitely. Don't do self-assessment when you are tired or stressed out. <laughs> Just take your time and never rush with it. Because uh, you never know what situations might come from um, uh, in your memory when you are uh, looking at the, and your, uh, the possible competences. It, it takes time. Um, uh, and if you are very tired and uh, stressed, then it also changes your perception of, of the process, what you are doing. Another thing that my tip would be less is more. Try to focus better on, you know, two competence areas and uh, try to see what situations are best or most relevant now for you at this moment, rather than trying to, you know, rather more tick, okay, this I'm doing well, and this I'm doing not so well, or things like that. I think it's more like to, to look at from the quality intentions rather than quantity intentions. And my suggestion would be rather not to start from the competence model, but try it first to identify what bothers me in my work. Is it some situations that are not giving me peace of my mind, you know? And then try to see where are those situations are coming from with the help of the competence model. I think it can, it can help, uh, um, definitely help identify where it comes from. And then it will be very relevant because it comes from your real uh, practice. I would definitely say 
to keep the balance when you are, when you are asking for a feedback from your peer about uh, your work, to ask for both things. What, I'm, what do you think what my strength is about and which competence areas my strength is about. And I think that's also something that goes very well with the, with the intentions and uh, towards competence model. If we are looking at it as a, you know, oh, something wrong, something is wrong with me, I should, you know, assess myself. <laughs> That's one thing. And then, oh, but then what actually I can base my uh, work on, on my strength. I think it's also a very good uh, uh, way to look at it, to keep the balance. We hope this video contributed to you learning about the competence-based development for youth workers. 